This video is going to show how to do a FIFO inventory calculation using a chart. You can watch the video about our cost flow assumption and learn what FIFO, LIFO, and average cost is. This video is going to show you how to actually put it in a chart and answer the question. So on January 1, we have inventory of 60 units at $100 each. We want to put that into our chart. Let's check out our chart. The first three columns are for when we make a purchase. Next three columns are when we make a sale. And the last three columns are going to be used for every transaction because it's going to be where we perpetually keep up with our inventory. We are using the perpetual method of inventory so we always know what our inventory balance is. So on January 1, we have a beginning balance. So we have 60 units at 100. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply 60 times 100 unit cost and get 6,000. On January 9th, we make a sale, so I come to my cost of merchandise sold column. So I'm going to put 35 units at my sale, and at this point, I'm going to ask myself what 35 units were there. Well, I only have one price so far, so it has to be the 100. So that would be 35 times 100. 3500. We'll see in one mo in a moment what happens when you have more than one price level. So now I have to get my new inventory balance. Well, I had 60 and I just sold 35. So 60 and I sold 35. So now I have 25 units left. And the unit cost is 100. So what I do is I multiply 25 times 100 to get my ending inventory balance. January 13th, I'm gonna purchase some more. I see my inventory balance is down to 25, so I need to purchase some more units. So I purchased 50, and as you can see, we purchased them at a higher dollar amount, so there must be some inflation um, making our price go up. So the total cost would be the 50 times the 110. Now pay attention right here because this can get a little tricky for students. I'm going to highlight this so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. I need two lines to take care of my inventory now. Take care of January 13th because now I have two price levels. So I still have what I had before I had the, this transaction. I still have 25 units at for 100 at a total of 2500 dollars. That's still there, but my new line is going to show that I also have 50 units. So I have 50 units at $110 for $5,500. So if I wanted to know my ending inventory at January 13th, I would have to add these two numbers together. I'm going to keep this in this order. The oldest needs to always be first, and the newer one needs to always be second because you'll need to know the order as you go through these. Okay, let's go to January 25th. We made a sale, so now we come over to our sales at cost of merchandise sold columns, and I say that I sold 48 unit, units. So here's the question. Which units did I sell? I shouldn't have typed in 48, and I'll show you why in just a second. Just hold off on that. I need to sell my oldest ones first because I'm FIFO. I'm first in. I'm the oldest, so I'm going to sell the oldest ones first. Of the oldest old ones, do I have at $100? I only have 25 units of them. So let me sell those 25 at 100 for a total cost of 2500 and the rest will come out of the newer inventory. So I need to sell a total of 48 units. I already sold 25 at 100, so I'll say 48 minus 25, and that leaves 23 units. So I'm going to sell 23 at the newer price level of 110, which equals 23 times 110. 2530. So a minute ago I told you that I shouldn't type in 48 because these two numbers together equal 48. But I have to put them on separate lines because they each have a different price. 
Okay, let's talk about how we're going to do the ending inventory. Okay, I start at the top. I had 25 at 100. Do I have those anymore? No, I sold them all right here, didn't I? So, zero at 100 would equal zero times 100 is zero. Okay, let's look at the second line. I had 50 at 110, but I sold 23 of those. So 50 minus 23 says I have 27 left. At 110 equals 27 times 110, 2970. So my ending inventory would be a total of these two, which would equal 2970. So now let's answer the questions up here. Assuming a perpetual inventory system and using the first in first out method, determine A, the cost of merchandise sold on January 25th. So on January 25th, we sold 2500 plus 2530, so the total cost of merchandise sold would be 5030 Now let's look at B. And then the inventory, the ending inventory on January 31st would be 2970 So the answer to B is 2970 and that is how you use the chart to account for your inventory under the FIFO assumption. Please let me know if you have any questions.